good morning, perhaps good morning, it would depend where you are. I want to do a papier-mâché bow, but it needs to be different this time. Generally speaking, when I do one, what I do is I tie a piece of um, thread, that kind of stuff, to the end, I poke it through here, I pull thread out through the bottom of the flower pot and I tape it underneath so it's pretty firm. And what I want to do today is use this, that's a beautiful, beautiful shape actually to make a bowl, just perfect, and then you can add a foot underneath. But this way I want to use this which I also think is just lovely. And what I thought I'd do is do it the usual way, which is little bits of tissue paper first of all. But then I suddenly saw this stuff, which is a gauze, which is impregnated with pa Plaster of Paris. And I, I thought this would be fun. So what I'm going to do is, I actually haven't taped it, so I'm going to have to do it in stages um, so that we equally distribute the weight. And I'm going to cut some pieces like this. And then I'm going to cut some that I'm going to cut into triangles. You'll see why, because sometimes you just need to um, put a little bit on and it's quite useful if you've already got triangular bits ready, because this sets quite quickly with water. Um, I don't even need to use the PVA glue for this, but I thought it would make a really nice firm inside and then possibly, depending on how it looks and what I want to make, I can smear the inside with the uh, air-dried papier-mâché clay. Maybe, or just leave it like a canvasy effect. So, what I do is I... I was going to use PVA glue. Generally speaking, I, I use PVA glue, but I'm going to use that brush, wash it out. And I'm going to just wet... The mod is called Modrock. Oh, there's a little fly in there. Let's get you out. There you go. Go and live another day, please. There you are. So, Modrock, because you can stretch it around. One of those little real time videos. So you see what I'm doing? I'm trying to equalise the weight here, really. Um, yeah, I suppose you could actually wet the balloon, but because it's um, it's a plasticky uh, surface, the water just sort of separates. So I think it's probably better to bring it on like that first of all, because we can cut it to shape later on. I'll turn around and do some more sides. I haven't seen this actually done um, on YouTube, but I've done it in different ways before. Often when I'm doing a relief, I will use Modrock because it's like the old fashioned papier-mâché. Years ago, there was um, a beautiful English craft called pargeting, which meant that on the outsides of houses, often country cottages and things, um, the plasterers would mould the most beautiful and fantastical um, animals or just shapes, you know, fleur-de-lis or whatever, and they'd build them up with layers of clay and, and animal hair, and they use this stuff called scrim, which is basically hessian, which is a sort of rather rough version of this, which is a surgical gauze, which has got plaster of Paris already impregnated. You see what I'm doing here? I'm just using the triangular bits to kind of bring in the gaps like that. So that kind of, I suppose I could just add that, I was going to say that's sort of my my first bit done. I could just bring it around a bit more, maybe cut off a little bit just for that. Yeah, the pargeting was how I first got interested in papier-mâché because when I grew up in Cheshire there were a lot of cottages there that had pargeting on the outside and they were so beautiful and I had no idea what it was. And then I saw this beautiful relief on a wall 
in a magazine belonging in a house belonging to Mr Colfax of Colfax and Fowler, the fine um, wallpaper makers. And they, I just thought it was beautiful and, and I cut it out and looked at it. This is before the days of digital photography and blowing up things. And it was of a rabbit teaching its baby rabbit how to steal Brussels sprouts. So there's a targeted area of a Brussels sprout with a mother rabbit and a baby rabbit. And I made a copy. I got a lot of clay and I carved out what I thought looked like the mother and the baby in the sprout plant. And then I covered the whole thing with plaster of Paris and ended up with this incredibly heavy, big mould, which then I put, um, we did, I didn't even have more drop them. I just used to put layers of gauze and sprinkle pa plaster of Paris on and water and bit by bit built up this, air, this layer. And it's in the shed and I, I'll get it out and show it you. It was about 25 years old now and it's been through many incarnations in my life and my moves and it's got rather mouldy and it needs repairing. And maybe I'll even make another one because they're really beautiful. They're reliefs which you just put on the wall. And that's how I learnt to use mod rock. But I think we can make the most incredible th bowls with this. And in one of my previous videos, when I was down in London, I was picking up the um, seed heads and traily bits off the plane trees that you get in cities. Um, and they're beautiful at this time of the year because often the twiggy bit has started to sort of fray out into its fibrous part. And I've made some moulds with the silly gum and I've made some... Um, air dry papier mache impressions and they're, they're hard now which is used for making jewellery but I'm going to make some more and put them around the bowl and then gild the inside of the bowl with silver leaf and then let it get distressed and it's going to look beautiful. So first stage papier mache bowl without paper just with plaster of Paris and and gauze commonly called mod rock but if you can't find mod rock, it's pretty easy to get very thin gauze from dressmakers or from a chemist. It's used for bandages and you can also buy plaster of Paris and it's possible to make the two up. But what's lovely about this is it must have some kind of glue with it or size because it's, it's kind of totally impregnated into the material. It's easy to use. I'll get back to you with part two of this one. Okay, toodaloo.